Okay. Hey, Bulldog people, cousins and clay, low peoples. Gosh, I hope this is a better signal than we had before. We lost you. Sorry. I will. I will assume that um, it was a my Wi-Fi dropped out. Maybe I should turn my um, well. Can't do it now. We'll just go. We'll just be hopeful. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this pot back in the frame here. Let's see. Hello. Natalie, how are you? I'm learning everybody's name. Hey, Jen. If your name's not obvious in your in your tag, it's hard for me to, but I'll, I'll get to know you. Sort of like, there we go. So I'm using my red clay, which is uh, dug here in the, in the field, literally. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me again. I'm so sorry about losing you before. Hey, Denise. Myrtle Beach, cool, we're heading that way in a week. Heading that way, uh, going to Hunting Island for spring break with the kids. Okay, we're gonna get right to it. <laughs> so hopefully people uh, watch, if you haven't watched my uh, other scope, go drop down and uh, maybe go watch that first because I introduced you to some of the tools I'm using, but uh, <laughs> I'm just testing you. Well, I, I just, I'm sorry. I. I uh, Let's see if I get a good light here. So what I was going to say was, um, this is all stamp work. It's a Korean technique called sangam, and uh, so what I'll do later, I might show you this whole technique. I've, um, I'll stamp the piece, and then I'll uh, paint the whole pot. And this is one I did uh, this morning. I'll stamp the whole piece, and then I'll I'll do. Uh, I'll put a, several coats of white slip on this dark clay, and then after it's uh, filled in, I will um, scrape back to the original layer. So it'll have so each one of these designs, which uh, are stamped into the pot, will have white slip in them. And do I have one for you to see? No, I don't. Do I? I don't have one right here. But I'll uh, just keep. If you follow me here on Periscope and or Instagram, you can look at my work on Instagram. I have a lot of that. Uh, um, documented there you know i think i might just spin around one bit just give me a second and get the light right because the light's coming in very directly maybe you guys can how's that let's see i'm gonna have a shadow i guess i'll still have a shadow well anyway so i usually work from one area and i might put a few stamps uh of this kind Oh, that's not good, is it? It's just too much shadow. Too much shadow. I tried to move my station here uh, for internet purposes, for Wi-Fi purposes, but uh, now I'm dealing with some light issues. So that's good, I guess, huh? Should I just zoom in, maybe? Is that too zoomed in? Is it dizzying? Because I need to... I need to... I need to steady this part of my chest. Maybe distance is okay, huh? This clay is perfect for this stamping. It's it's uh, you know it's a, a, a leather hard. It's firm, but it's not too too hard. Uh, so I can so you can see this. It, it actually, it, it's a uh, fairly I don't know, deep is not the right word, but it's, it gets in there into the clay, so it, it requires a little bit of slip to fill those in. But then it's, uh, let's see if I can move my camera just a little bit this way. Hold on a second. How's that? That's better. That's better. That's better. The clay is a combination of um, uh, natural clay from my field here in North Carolina and um, some commercial processed clay uh, that I mix with it. This is a, a Unomi, so it's a, it's a drinking cup. Um, 
that will it's for a show oops it's for a show that's happening in um april i believe or is it may i don't even know the dates all i know is i need to get these done so i can ship them out so i'm going to put them in my next firing um so yeah it's really a lot of fun it's a little bit of obsessive technique and it's a lot of time but uh i really love it so the clay yeah the clay i don't know if you can see the richness of the clay it's got a nice kind of sparkly mica uh, fleck which kind of I don't think the mica lasts through the firing. It kind of melts out. Yeah, so um, I'm just stamping this pot so we'll keep prompting me to work because I, I can start talking about something and not. <laughs> I like to mix these stamps up. So this is a little cog. It's sort of related to the daisy, but it's a little bit, a little, a little different. So I'll put a few of these here. Yeah, the clay fire is fairly dark, and I'll put a, it'll be, um, this will actually get glazed, so it'll have like a um, grayish color to it, a light, dark gray. It won't be red, it won't be brown, it'll be kind of a gray. I'm actually working through the screen of my phone. I'm not looking at the piece. I'm like, um, so I'm moving a little slowly because I have to, I don't have the same kind of depth perception as I would if I was looking at the piece. But it's easier for me to keep this frame for you. See, I was gonna go um, And I'm not really, this is, you know, one of the things that I did with these cups which is a little different than I've been using for my, you know, with my other stamp work is I threw these fairly heavy. They're on the heavy side. So I don't necessarily have to support them inside like this. They're pretty thick. So especially this part of the pot is pretty sturdy. The rim, I have to hold it because I don't want to deform that rim. But um, I'm just going to move up this pot and No, I haven't done any, you know, I didn't, haven't done any clay mining recently. It's been a while. It's been a, uh, I think I mixed up a batch last summer. But that batch was actually dug. It was clay that had been dug um, a year before that. So it was just sitting there and I had to, I mixed it with that. But maybe this summer, I don't know, we'll see. I have some uh, interns maybe coming up this summer that we might be able to dig some more clay. It's kind of time consuming as you can imagine digging clay and processing it. But it's interesting and I love doing it. So so this rim wants to wants to bend when I push into it so I have to back it up with my finger here. So that's uh, <clears throat> sort of a diagonal band of this this stamping except for the cogs. Um, Yeah, I'm not too um, perfect about this, you know. Like, like you're saying, I, there's like a, I was missing the edge there, but um, that's okay. Um, I'm actually kind of interested in this space here, in between the stamps. It's just going to be the clay, the dark clay won't be slipped. Sometimes that negative space or the space between the pattern is as interesting as the pattern itself. So I still have to cut the foot ring on this pot. It's not, you know, this is just cut off the wheel. It's not, there'll be a foot, uh, if you know what I mean. If you're uh, not a potter and you're kind of wondering what I mean by foot, it's the sort of rim on the bottom of a plate or a cup that's been cut away. So it um, adds a little elegance to the piece and um, weight, takes some of the weight off. Let's put, let's put a few random stamps here. I think this is... Oops, there goes a random, I just might have broken a stamp. Well, I'm gonna wait on randomness for now. I'm gonna, let's put, let's put a few of these random ones in. I'm rocking and rolling. <laughs> Did I say that? I'm rocking and rolling. I'm rocking this stamp and sort of rolling it around to get um, the stamp to impress all around. So 
these are kind of in, these bullseye kind of things are kind of intense. So I'm gonna just put them randomly around here. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do a whole. Oops. Nice thing about these commercial stamps, I can kind of get back in here and complete it because they're the same size. Yeah, I use uh, hi itching stitching. I'm using these are. Um, I'll show you this stamp. It's MKM. Not it doesn't have anything to do with. It's not my initials. It's a company called MKM. You see that? This is a. Uh, let's see real quick. Hi Amanda, nice to meet you. I think you've been here before. I just. Uh, this is MKM. Let's see. This one here has a nice stamp on it. You can see the name. MKM. S E S four, I think that's the four. This is a uh, eleven. It looks like eleven. They have all kinds of stamps. I mean, they have probably hundreds of stamps you can choose from. I've picked some of these these sort of uh, more traditional ones. Then I have a stamp. This is a stamp that I made out of clay. This is actually clay that's been bisque fired, and um, you know I just roll a coil out of clay and then I kind of. Put little holes. I had to use a drill bit for this one, and uh, then I actually faceted the side a little bit just to give it a hexagonal outside shape. So, and I have this cog here. I need to clean some of these out. They're they're getting kind of sometimes they get full of clay. But anyway, so we got a couple little bullseye target type of things, and I'm gonna I want to use uh, let's use this one again. I like this Daisy stamp. And you know they can overlap a little bit. It's okay. It's it doesn't um, it actually looks kind of nice that way. I'm not shaking it too much. I really need to have a GoPro camera. I think that would be cool to have a GoPro camera on my forehead. That way you could see what I'm looking at. Cause that's why I try to try to convey. Yeah, it's good for spring. I'm trying to convey what I'm looking at here through the through the screen for the periscope my view so a lot of times in workshops you know i'll show techniques and then uh, people go back to their wheels and go now how was that done so this is a good little record of how i do it how what i'm seeing yeah make some stamps i need to make some more stamps i have a whole jar of coils that are ready to go i haven't uh, but i just you know i need to yeah i need to make a note for myself make a stamp today uh, that would be fun. They're fun to make. So these are for the show that happens in Iowa City at a car design, and and the name of the guy, the Twitter, their Twitter feed, is uh, a car design. It's in the title of this program, so you can copy and paste that into Twitter and see their feed and and get in touch with them. They have a show called. Um, yeah, maybe I will. Um, make a do a stamp scope yeah a car you you might know them they're at Iowa City they, they one of the first galleries to really take on the online um, market way back when let's see I think I want to put a little something in here like I said I'm not I'm working through this lens of the phone so if it looks I'm going kind of slow I'm trying to I don't have any depth perception it's almost like squinting you know when you squint at something and you get that kind of you get a flat kind of view of something let me get back up here in the camera so you can see it all right so that's some cogs some daisies and um, I think I want to do a another row of I don't know if I'm so into the symmetry though, maybe I should try something slightly different. Although it looks kind of random on first glance, it, looks, it still looks pretty random. Maybe what I, maybe what I should do is do a little live design, live design here. I'm just going to, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little triangle of this design. Of this, uh, these are like this group, hexagonal group of dots. 
it looks like almost, you know, it reminds me of the close-up of a basketball surface. You know, the basketball has that kind of grain. It kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, I'm going to stamp the whole pot. Except for the bottom. I'm, not, I'm going to leave that. What I might do, the bottom might, may have um, some carving. Or I may cut the foot and then, and then do some uh, stamping along the bottom. Yeah, it looks like a honeycomb. Yeah, too, true. That'd be a kind of cool thing. You get breakfast cereals and make stamps out of breakfast cereals. Because I remember eating, what was that cereal called? That a honeycomb shape? I also have some stamps that I've made from tennis shoes. Uh, I'm not using them now because they're not fired yet. So I made some stamps out of the, the bottom of my tennis shoes. And sometimes tennis shoes have really cool patterns. Honeycomb cereal, yeah. Yeah, so G Giselle uh, number five ceramics. I'm gonna stamp this piece and, add, and then uh, I'm gonna coat it with slip. So I'm gonna fill in the, the voids with slip. Um, yes, Mishima, yes. And specifically, this is in this is more of a Korean technique called sangam, uh, more of a traditional Korean technique. Um, I like this. I like this view. I might have to snap a couple screenshots of this later, and maybe do a Instagram with it. Cause I like the I like the light, the light on this right now. So yeah, so in Korea, it's called sangam, according to my friend Adam. He's spent some time in Korea, and uh, he's my Korean translator for me. But um, I, this technique is, um, yeah, in Japan it's called Mishima, so that's a Japanese name for this inlay technique. But uh, in Japan, how do you spell Sangam? It's S-A-N-G-G-A-M. It's in the title. Of, I think it's in the title of this of this scope. Um, so. <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's just a different, yeah, but Korean, I mean, you know, in Japan, you can do a rope impression. I've seen rope impressed pots and stamped pots. I mean, you know, I think of uh, Shimaoka. Um, his work was uh, inlay, salt glaze, rope textures, you know. Anything that's inlaid with a different color slip, it's a similar technique. So I'm kind of going on about this. Let's see, I'm going to get to another stamp now. So these are like, I like these little edges here that's catching the light and little, this little diamond shape that's not stamped. It's kind of nice to me. So i like to see what can happen, uh, you know, randomly, I guess. I'm going to do a few of these stamps because I haven't done, I don't think I've used this stamp on this pot yet. This It's a daisy stamp, but it's, uh, it's slightly different. Um, it's this one here. So it's a tricky. So this is, this reminds me of, this looks to me more Japanese. So what happens is when I fill the slip, the voids on this piece will be around the petals instead of the, the actual petals. In this case, will be the design, the white design. Um, yes, it'll be the opposite. So it'll be the white will be around the petals. Hey, Steve, how's it going? My friend Steve's just joined us. Yeah, so this is a, they call it embossed and debossed. I think this one is the deboss one, so I think I could be wrong. What's broke? Besides me and my my stamp. Hold on. Any and Audi, yeah. <laughs> Goodness, I dropped that stamp so far away. 
Okay, this stamp survived. I dropped this stamp, but it survived. It's all there. Sorry, my headphones. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm using it. I'm I'm using the terminology because I'm trying to. I'm sort of trying to work within that tradition. Okay, so what am I doing here? I dropped my stamp. Okay, I'm going to finish this row. Um, yeah, so I'm going to, I might even, I don't know, I have to, I have to cook tonight, so I'm not sure what time it is now. Let's see, it's, oh, it's almost six, okay. So i got to wrap this cup up. I probably won't slip it now. I'll probably slip it later. I need to go make uh, supper. Somebody's got to cook. Kids are hungry. Um, it's funny. I have a. I'm missing part of my finger here. You can't see it. I don't want to gross you out, but I, I lost it in an accident. But it, it makes a very good <laughs> tool for stamping, which is kind of ironic, I guess. Um, I use it exclusively when I'm using these stamps. The um, the menu tonight is tacos, and we're. I know we're a day early. But we have some venison. Um, okay, great. Th thanks for joining us, Belinism. Um, after you slip, you scrape off all of it. Yes, yeah. After I slip, and it's several layers of slip to fill this 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 in. Uh, uh, several layers of slip, and then it's uh, then it's time to scrape off the excess. And I coat the whole pot, so the whole pot gets coated in slip. It's just easier that way. And then, um, yep, I scrape it off. Some people, you know, I've, I've even tried using uh, a sponge and sponging off that first layer. And it's, but actually, once I get, uh, oh, oh, thank you for joining me. Uh, I, I didn't catch your name. Uh, jo uh, the. Um, once I get going on this technique, I can really get, it's much faster when I scrape. I just scrape uh, pretty quickly, and I know, and it's just, one, it's not like scratching away at it, like a scratch ticket. <laughs> it's actually scrape, like digging through and knowing how deep to cut and how deep, you know, how fast to go. Hey, Trav, Trevi. Yeah, so the slip has to be somewhat uh, set, like almost like the same, almost like the same um, dryness as this cup is right now. If it's too wet, it just smears. Oh, you lost your oh, good. You have your so you have a you have a thumb. That's tricky, I bet. Yeah, it's a good it's a good tool. So I'm gonna put a couple of these guys on because I I meant to do that, but I lost I dropped the stamp. So let's get this light right, okay? Um, So maybe I just have some, maybe I have some attachments that are just for my finger. I have like a snap-on tool kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, 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 usually, I usually talk about it at workshops, but it, it takes a while with adults to, to, although it's something I think people probably notice right away. Uh, like, you know, you just notice about when somebody has a, Part missing. <laughs> anyway, if I'm with kids, if I'm if I'm doing a workshop with kids, or if I'm at the school doing a little demo, it doesn't take long for the kids to say, "Hey, what happened to your finger?" <laughs> it's pretty much the first thing they say. So um, these are kind of cool. I like this stamp. This is one of my favorites. So that's kind of a little, like I said, it's like a quilt, sort of a quilt pattern. You know, that's traditional kind of six-sided, overlapping quilt flower. Yeah, kids are pretty, they're pretty, uh, pretty up front, you know, which is cool. And, that, you know, adults are polite and they're, you know, they're, oh, hey, how you doing? Is that who I think it is? Oh, hey, Sarah, I thought that was you. Nice to see you. How's, you, how's your day going? Are you off work? Are you ready to do some sangam? Sarah Petty, who has just joined us, is a uh, has been doing this technique as well, and it's uh, we sort of trade ideas back and forth. It's really cool. And we were we were just talking the other day about um, 
who went, you know, we were just kind of going back on our timeline on Instagram, because that's how we sort of stumbled up, up, uh, across each other, and um, kind of re reconstructing our memory of how, you know, this stuff happens, how we, how we, how we influence each other by, you know, social media, and you see things like right now you're seeing this, and you may want to go out and buy some stamps, or you might want to start making some stamps, or you might want to just try this yourself. So that's how it all gets passed on. And that's what I like about the social media. Oh, so I, I lost my finger uh, in a table saw accident. I was cutting a piece of plywood. Mm, I wouldn't, I don't want to gross you out, but you know, it's a pretty common occurrence for guys who are working on projects, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, it wasn't even anything I was, it wasn't anything serious, it was just sort of a, I was just cutting scraps. No, this was like, uh, 2005, I guess, so 10 years ago. So, yeah, so it's, you know, I still have a, it's bendable. <laughs> uh, got maybe half of, I lost half of my Maybe a little less than half of my finger. So, yep. Anyway, it took me a while to get back to making pots. Maybe um, three months. And I was just telling somebody the other day, we were talking, for some reason we were talking about this subject. It came up. My wife bought some mica at a local, uh, they mine, mine mica here, they have for a long time. <clears throat> and uh, the guy there was showing my wife and my daughter a jar of fingers, fingertips that had been chopped off in the process of cutting the mica. Pretty gruesome. But I think my sister, my, my, sister, my uh, daughter was uh, kind of intrigued by it. My youngest daughter doesn't remember it, she was too young. My older daughter would, might have been had a different reaction because she remembers the whole thing. She was pretty scared. Everybody was pretty scared for me, but um, I had really good care, and I. It's a good. Um, <laughs> well, it's you know, it's like a, it's like the, you know, the Mutter Museum in Philadelphia. It's like formaldehyde or something where they preserve things like that. Anyway, um, uh, I had good care. I had health insurance. So if you operate a chainsaw or a table saw or anything that's, you know, sharp <laughs> and uh, or if you're a glass blower, you better have health insurance because if something like this does happen, you get good, you, you know, you get pretty good care. I had a, a friend of mine, unfortunately, lost his fingertip and he's a carpenter. He was cutting something and lost his uh, finger. And he went basically went to the hospital and just had him sew it up, and he went home. He didn't really, he couldn't afford to uh, have the care that he didn't have any insurance, so he just went to the emergency room. And it's you know, it's unfortunate because you know I, um, I mean I actually had him. You know he actually worked with worked with um, the fact that I'm a potter and my my surgeon. I guess I'm saying. And um, he actually explained to me how he did the procedure. We had quite, so I guess I'm getting bogged down in this story, but it may be interesting. I went every week to a checkup from, with my doctor. Not down, oops, I just dropped my tool. Not down here. This is, and I was just saying before you came in that this bottom area is pretty firm. It's also kind of th like I threw this pot kind of on the thick side. I do support it up here on the rim because it's uh, thinner here and it's also more movable. Down here is pretty, it seems like it's, it's, um, it's pretty stable, it doesn't need my support. So that's what's happening there, but good, good call, Sarah. You know, it's almost like maybe uh, Sarah Petty, who's uh, just asked the questions, uh, does some beautiful stuff, she's on, on Instagram, 
Uh, you might want to type in your, your name because I might pronounce it wrong, Sarah, but uh, she has a great Instagram feed. And um, Sarah made some spheres recently. They were, you know, closed forms, beads and, um, and pen uh, brush. Um, oh, gosh, I'm forgetting, forgetting the name of that. It was a brush ferrule, I guess. Yeah, ferrules. Thank you. Um, and they were really nice, but they were close forms, I believe. And um, there's, you know, there. It's a different thing when the when the clay is unsupported. And if it's really thin, I'm finding out if the clay is really the clay wall is really thin, it's it's going to give, you know. Where this is this is fairly <laughs> pretty heavy, and the reason I'm that's one the one reason I'm leaving the the clay wall heavy is this red dirt has a fires uh loses a lot of weight when it's fired so if it's too thin it feels funny it feels like it's almost like it's not substantial enough <clears throat> oh yeah your your face your instagram tags yeah that's a good idea you do a screenshot and get a bunch of get a bunch of instagram names here Maybe a kind of a cool feature that I would like to have is for the presenter to actually type in something. Oh, you got two. Wow. Yeah, go go check out everybody's Instagrams because that's, that's a pretty cool thing for us artists. Thank you, for Sarah, for putting that in because I think... Echeveria, I would say Echeveria, I guess. Echeveria? No, Echeveria. It's funny, I my handle is Klein, my name, Ola, O-L-A, Klein Ola. And it, I never said it out loud until I went to a conference and I was presenting and I told people, well, my, you know, my Twitter handle is Klein Ola and I had never said it out loud before. It was just something in print or on screen. So I'll I'll stamp down. I, I'm sort of I'm sort of supporting it. You know, I'm holding it that way, but it doesn't need to be, especially down here. Maple Leaf Pottery Studio is cool. You know, if you guys, I still see a lot of folks with who don't have any information in their profile here on Periscope. So they, you can put a linkable. Or clickable link in your profile here on Periscope, and uh, if Instagram is a, a good place for people to go to see your work, put your link there. Um, let's see what I got here. Yeah, okay. Hi, Paul. Oh, cool. You can put more than one link. That's good to know. Thank you, CQ. Good to know. I found out some new things about uh, Periscope. Oh, good. That's a great idea. Um, yeah, because Instagram, you have to actually fill out a form, and it, and whatever you put in your URL form, they put on your profile. But here, this is Periscope is more of a. I don't know how many characters you're allowed, but maybe you can get as many links in there, and you can even use a shortened link if you. Go to Bitly or one of those sh link shortening things and use more, you know, smaller links. Anyway, here we go. We're getting there. Getting there. I might do this a little bit faster if I wasn't talking, but not much more. So you get a real time idea of how much is, how much work goes into this. Yeah, if I was more of a kitchen show, you'll have to follow me, um, itch and stitching. Follow me and and maybe I'll do a I'll do a slipping. So I have done it in the past. I have done it in a week or so. Maybe a... in the meantime, you can look on my Instagram and see um, some images anyway of some of my pieces. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you for following, you guys. Whoever's out there following me, I appreciate it. Yeah, so this will get slip. After the slip is in there, I'll scrape the slip off. And then I will... Um... Yes, I'm going to NSECA next year. I'm actually talking about doing a panel next year. Um, so I'll, hopefully our panel will be, our proposal will be accepted and we'll do a 
panel. So cool. So I was going to show you, I'm using this stamp here, which is the, uh, which is kind of cool. I can use it just half of the stamp. Let's see if I can do this on, and just do like that. Just get the edge like that. This is kind of cool. And I did this on several pots last firing. You might've seen them. So you can do just part of the stamp if you want and get a little, I call this sort of the, sort of the swamp, you know, little, speaking of fingertips, it looks like little fingertips. So you can do parts of stamps, like, which is another variation of, you know, just get these in here like that. So I might do this whole area, just partial stamps. So I might go a little faster if I was uh, not talking and answering questions, but uh, like I said, it is time consuming, you know? And then once the stamping is done, it's uh, inlay, it's like the painting, dipping, takes a while. Thank you, Sarah. You are too. Yes, so Sarah and I have been influencing each other for the last a little while, and it was really great to see your painting the other day on your pots. That was nice. I didn't know you were a painter. I mean, I knew you were an artist painter, but I didn't. I don't remember seeing you uh, use brushwork on your, uh, you know, on your pots. That was kind of cool to see. I'm not sure how this one looks. Let's try this one partially. This little cog. It's a little bitty stamp. And you can sort of see the scale. I'm, I'm, I'm working with pretty small tools here, so this one is kind of, yeah, this is all right. And it was nice to see uh, her Sarah painting some bamboo on a pot, a nice pot. So, oh, cool! That's awesome. Yeah, it was really nice. I don't have any skill like that. I, I'm sort of a. I don't. I never. I've never taken a. Um, a sumier or anything like that. Any kind of brushwork class. Sort of in that, in that sense, I'm sort of um, <clears throat> in that sense, I'm sort of um, self-taught, I guess. I don't know if that's if that's the stretch. So here's the here's the cup. So it's got a little bit of variety of of pattern. You know, it's. Um, Am I eating the hearts? I'm hungry. <laughs> I can't remember which side of the screen I'm supposed to be eating hearts on. Anyway, that's that one. And uh, it, it will get slipped next. Taco hearts, that'd be nice. Mmm, yummy. <sighs> yeah, tacos are sounding really good. I'm starting to water. Save it for Pittsburgh. We'll be able to drive. Oh, cool! So Pittsburgh is after Portland. Is that? Are you talking about Enseca? Here's the one I I was showing you earlier. So this is a little, slightly different feel. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I didn't really talk about the shape. This is more of a round shape. You know, it has a, a rounder profile here um, versus this one here, which is more straight. And it's got more of a straight line. Let's see if I get that against my. Uh, so. Yes, so, oh, hi, Sip Loop. I'm in, I'm about three hours from Seagrove West. So, uh, Earthham, Earth, Earthham, Earthham, Earthham. Hello, thank you very much. That's nice. Thanks, thanks for saying that. They're uh, cups, and I'll, so next thing I'll do is I'll trim this. I'll probably, the next thing I'll probably do is cut this foot. I think that'll be next. They're ready for that. And then, uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, let me show you the inside. This one has a little bit of um, well, not really. It's only slightly, and you, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's only slightly. Let's see if I can adjust the lighting on this. Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to change. Hmm. Anyway, um, who? I think it's the stamping is really hard on the pot. It's like really. I'm handling the pot a lot, and if I had a foot ring here to have to deal with, I might have to be careful with that. So, 
Um, it's easier to handle this way. That's main, the main reason. It's easier, easier just to hold on to it. And, and, you know, like when I was doing this in front of the camera, I was actually holding it against my chest and stamping. And the, my camera was in between the pot and, and me. So it's another reason to keep it. Um, and when I put the slip on the pot, it's sort of... Um, I gotta show you. I want to take you outside real quick before I before I sign off here. It's six. Yeah. So um, let me do that real quick. We're done with this pot. I'm gonna take you and show you the, the brilliant light right now outside. Uh, let's show part two. Part two. Part two. I mean the slipping. Maybe. I'm not sure what my schedule is gonna be like tonight. I may do it tonight. We'll see. Uh, may I may be, have some time to scope and. At night time's better for me to scope because my daughter's on, and you know nobody's using the Wi-Fi. Um, I was going to show you the beautiful light right now, and let's see. Um, it's really pretty. It's green, and I wanted to show you uh, if you can see this or not. It's so bright. <laughs> my daughter's down there playing basketball. Yes, I'm just showing the trees. I'm showing my my uh, my uh, Periscope people the trees. My daughter's down there. I don't know if you can see her. She's in there playing basketball. Um, I don't know if you can see that cherry tree is blossoming. Isn't that pretty? I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble. Hey, hey, how's it going? It's Terry, the nature guy. I'm showing some nature. <laughs> Trying to get this to focus on this cherry tree, but it's uh, a little bit shaky and not working so well. There we go. Also, there's a beautiful maple tree over here in the woods. Maybe you guys can see it better than me because I'm I'm out here in the bright sunshine. There's a beautiful maple tree there. It's getting really red, and budding out. It's it's a it's been a it's been a really windy day, but yeah, and chilly. Uh, here comes my chickens. They're out loving the grass. I'm getting some chlorophyll. Oh, you had snow today? Oh, man. Oh. Anyway, so my chickens are there. They're coming up the hill. They hear my voice and they come up here to think I'm going to give them some corn, but I'm all out of corn, unfortunately. Connecticut. Yeah, I used to live in western Massachusetts. Um, we had snow yesterday. <laughs> we had snow yesterday. It was a little sleet, kind of sleety, kind of snow. I don't know if it was if it was sleet or I'm out of corn. Well, I need to. I'll just need to buy some scratch feed. I I I ran out. Uh, the corn I grew last summer. My garden's right over the hill here. It's like a little. I have a, about a quarter acre patch of corn and beans and whatnot. And um, I just ran out of the corn that I grew last summer. So so it's a pretty day. You can see. You know, I haven't been doing my walking scopes in the morning. Uh, mainly because uh, plan. <laughs> I have I have to, when I'm out there on the mountain I have to sort of use my data and I uh, I have to be careful about that because um, you know as you know it's expensive but um, maybe maybe I'll we'll, uh, do some more scoping from the road from the trail I have a nice walk which I do uh, I'll show you real quick sign off um, well, I sort of go up this this mountain here and uh, this hill. It's called Big Ridge, and I, I got a pretty nice view from up there of the Black Mountains, which are Terry. Uh, my, the Black Mountains are through these trees here, so it'll give you an orientation of where I am. And you can also look on the map. There's a oops, sorry about that. I didn't mean to spin you around so quickly. There's a map uh, on the title of this of this broadcast, and you can sort of see where I am. I'm sort of northeast of Asheville, North Carolina. I'm about an hour from Asheville and about an hour from Boone. Um, yeah, it does. It does take a battery. Although I have a new phone, I have a fairly new phone. I got it in December. It comes from chickens, and uh, the battery life on that seems to be really. It seems to be pretty good, um, and it's a, it's an iPhone 6s. So here goes the chickens. Here's my van. I, you know, the funny thing about it, I think I, the last time I periscoped, I was sitting out here, and the van has not moved. I haven't driven my van in about four or five days. That's, uh, so I'm out here. I, I pretty much make pots, and uh, that's about it these days. I'm, I'm really busy trying to get ready for a firing. 
So uh, I have I have um, a lot of work to do this week, and I also have I'll also have a workshop end of this week. There's my there's my rooster from last summer. He was he hatched last summer, and he's sort of uh, that's his girlfriend right there, or sister. I'm not sure which you want to call him, but <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I you know, I, if I don't have to go out, I'm kind of lazy that way. If I don't have to go out, I'll just stay here because <laughs> um, I'll even call my wife, uh, and if she's out or coming back from work, I'll ask her to pick something up at the hardware store. I just don't feel like going out, so I, I'll try to get her to bring things home to me. So anyway, that's, this is the end of my scope. I think I need to go make some tacos. There's some more chickens. There's my other rooster right there. There's the older rooster. That's Daddy Rooster. And uh, anyway, they're out looking for bugs, eating grass, and having a good time. It's a beautiful afternoon. I don't blame. There's Jack. So that's my world. <laughs> thanks for joining me, y'all, and thanks for hanging out. And uh, we'll uh, we'll do it again sometime soon. I hope. <laughs> there's Jack. He's uh, he's got something in his view. I'm not sure what he sees. He sees something up there now, or hears something. Yeah, thank you. It's nice. To, I, I'm sorry I haven't been. I have uh, myself. So it's nice to get in touch with y'all and talk to chat with you. Show you what I'm doing. Oh, I also, <laughs> I meant to tell you about the teapots. They were a complete disaster. Oh, good. I'm glad you. I thought, I'm glad you liked it. I, I promised some of you guys who were here last week with me that I would um, uh, show you my teapots that I was working on, and I've, I'm afraid to say that they've been a sort of disaster. I'm going to get back on them, but I wasn't able to periscope because I was completely. Um, yeah, what's well, the idea? <laughs> But the, the teapots are very challenging. It, it's been probably maybe eight or nine years since I made this form, this particular kind of teapot form. So I'm having trouble with, uh, I had to retool since I didn't have the templates for my, uh, from previous teapots. And it's been kind of a challenge to get those um, to work. I'm working on them. I'm, I'm getting there. But it's just, you know, uh, anyway, I wanted, to, I wanted to mention to you, a couple of you guys who were, on my scopes last week, and I kept promising to to show you my teapot progress, but there wasn't any progress. So, anyway, um, that's all for now. And maybe tonight I'll do some more scoping. But uh, until next time, y'all have a great uh, evening, uh, morning, wherever you are in the world. And thanks for joining me. And we'll see you on your on your periscope soon. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye, roosters. Bye-bye, Van. <laughs>